A strategic business plan is essential for any business and I'm going to tell you exactly what one includes, why it's important and if you stay to the end I'll tell you how to write one as well. I'm Steph from Innovate and Thrive Co, a business design consultant who helps service-based businesses to thrive through strategy, operations and intentional design. As a one-person business, it's easy to think that winging it is fine and if we're completely honest, most of us winged it for the first few months of being in business. It's not ideal, but it is normal. After a while, you find that things take longer than necessary, both in terms of day-to-day -day tasks and your growth. We hit plateaus often and, and we find ourselves making financial decisions that don't really make sense. So we might spend out on systems, for example, that we don't need or that don't serve us as well as they possibly could. An agile business, uh, one that has potential to grow, genuine potential to grow, one that fulfills our values and one that brings us joy is never going to come about by winging it. That takes intentional decision making and planning. So what does that mean? Well, it means creating a starting point, a strategic business plan that sets out your vision as it stands today. It means reviewing, refining and evolving that plan regularly. It means understanding that there's going to be many iterations of both your plan and your business. And that's OK. And in fact, it's not only OK, it is the best way to grow. The strategic business plan is the what, why, how and who of your business. It connects your mission with your ideal clients, with your services, your marketing, your operations, your people, your property, everything. It's the big picture of your business. It acts as your guide and your decision making framework. It enables you to identify growth opportunities and risks as well. It's your anchor and your compass. It's your information, so you can put it in whatever format you like. If you are a visual person, maybe Trello or Milanote or Mindly might be appropriate for you. If you are a project planner, maybe something like ClickUp or Asana would be good for you. If you like pen and paper, get a dedicated notebook. If you like a document, use Word or Canva or PowerPoint. It really, really doesn't matter. As long as it makes sense to you and anyone that you work with, it's perfect and it's fine. Now, when it comes to writing the business plan, uh, you can use my BOPS framework. So behaviours, operations, people and strategy. And I'll just briefly recap what that means. Um, so your behaviours are your drivers. They're your values, your mission and your vision. And then how that translates into the culture and leadership styles within your business, if appropriate. Your operations, as we've mentioned, your systems, your processes, your property. Um, what do you need in place to deliver your vision? And always try to find efficiencies, whether that's cost, whether that's time, try to find efficiencies. But at the same time, make sure that your operations are set up in a way that supports the growth you have planned. So systems need to grow with you. Um, your hiring plan should be in place ready to, for your business to grow with you and the skill sets to grow with you. Um, it can be time consuming if you do it retrospectively or on the fly. So really planning now is the best way uh, to make sure that that's a seamless experience as your business grows. Your people. What skills will you need in your business to bring your vision to life? So don't just think in the next six months. Think beyond that. What does 12 months look like? 18 months look like? Ultimately, if you were to deliver your dream business, what would that look like in terms of skill sets that you have within the business? Remember, it's just the first iteration, but get it on paper. And finally, strategy. So that's everything else. That's the what of your business. So think about your goals, your ideal clients, your products and services, your pricing, your financial forecasting and your marketing. Um, that is really where you're the picture of your business begins to build and you can see what you what it is that you're going to be doing and, and how you're going to be doing it. And the difference between a basic business plan and a strategic business business plan is how that all connects together. You've included your whys, your values, the, the behaviours in that, and you've included the people that you want to work with and you're joining the dots. 
And so beyond being your idea of what you want to do, which is a very technical description of what you want to do, this is really connecting those strategic elements about meeting the needs of your clients through a set of behaviours and values that really connect with them and connect with you as a business owner. And that's what makes it strategic because you're always coming back to both the values that drive you and the clients that you're working for and would like to work with. So the big question is how do you take the BOPS framework and turn it into a strategic business plan? And I promise I would share that with you and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. This is how I write a strategic business plan for my clients, for my own business. So first thing to note is this is not uh, for those who are seeking financial investment. If you are seeking financial investment in your business, you will need a far more substantial business plan. Um, I'll link one in the blog below, have a look at that. This is simply for those who want to use it for their own purposes. Right, tip number one, uh, in fact, my one and only tip in this is just start. I know there's a massive, um, hesitancy and some fear around writing a business plan and I get it it can seem daunting because we always think of those massive documents and you know it just doesn't have to be like that just start uh, in whatever format works for you I promise it's not as scary as you think it is and now I'm going to share the order that I write it in so um, you can create sections you can uh, create a mind map, you can create a list, whatever you want to do in terms of formatting for you, start with this. So section number one, page number one, is a business summary. This is a brief description of what your business is, what it does and how. So describe what services you offer, describe who your ideal clients are, where you're going to be working from, who's going to be working in the business and delivering it. And that really, I mean, it's, it's less than a page generally for most businesses. Um, just, yeah, get, get that summary down on paper so that you know really succinctly what your business is. Then look at market research. So um, you can have a look at gaps in the market if you've got an idea, if you're beyond the idea stage, you want to do, be doing your ideal client research, you want to be looking at your competitors and what they're up to, market trends. Um, that is a big piece of work on its own. You want to summarise it into your plan. Um, there's ways of doing that. You can use social media, you can uh, Google is your best friend. There are obviously market research companies depending on the size and scale of the market research that you want to do. Um, email marketing and, and putting surveys out to your list. All of those different thing, different ways uh, you can get research in uh, that's useful for your business plan. Then comes your drivers. So this is the bit that's around your values, your mission and your vision. And obviously this is like the overarching um, purpose of your business as well as what weaves through every element of your business. So it's super critical that you take your time over that and really think it through. In the um, blog, you'll find an example of a business plan. So if you want to go back over this, you can and you can. I've completed an example for you so that you can see the kind of things I include in these sections. So after your drivers comes your products and services. So you've done your research, you know what your clients are looking for, you know what's already out there in the market. Now it's about tell it, telling the world what you're going to do. How are you going to meet the needs of your clients? How are you going to use your skill set to meet the needs of your clients? Um, and so really map that out. You want to get into the detail. You know, like if you're putting packages together, what's included in the packages? How long is it going to take you to deliver? What are you going to need to prepare um, in order to bring those packages to life? How will it work? Will it be over Zoom? Will it be in person? Is it a, a, a service in terms of like brand design or copywriting and what are your turnaround times? And, you know, really get into the detail of the services you're going to provide for your clients. Then you want to think about operations. So that feeds nicely into what we were just starting to talk about there. That's how you're going to deliver your business. And obviously your client experience, the process of you working with a client from them being a stranger all the way through to them leaving one of your services or having bought a product. That's your core process. 
everything else feeds off there. So it could be that it's your financial processes that feed off there. It could be the information flow. So if you're relying on subcontractors for part of the delivery of the work, how does that work? What processes do you need in place for that? What's your picking and packing process, your research and development process? All of these different processes are critical for, for most businesses and therefore documenting them and identifying the systems that are needed to go with them are really important. Uh, as well as obviously thinking about what that means in terms of property requirements. Uh, are you going to need a property? Uh, what kind of storage facilities will you need? Is there an office requirement? Can you work from home? All these questions can be answered in your business plan as well. And then people, as we've said, thinking about the skill sets that you're going to need over the next 12 to 18 months would be ideal. Your financial forecasting is really important. So this is about identifying all of your operating costs um, and that's fixed. And if you can, the variable costs as well. Uh, and obviously that includes your desired salary because you're going to want to earn something. Um, and then your desired uh, turnover on the on that basis. So above your costs, what else are you going to need? There's contingencies that we need to think about. Obviously things come out of the woodwork <laughs> like COVID that means we need money in the bank in case we have quiet months or, you know, uh, in case a laptop breaks, in case you need to invest in, you know, to keep your cash flow working well in terms of investing in stock and then reselling and that kind of thing. So lots to think about in the financial forecasting space, spend your time on it, really get to understand the, the detail of that and what you're working towards as a business because it will inform your goals when you come to write them. Um, then we are on to the marketing plan. So again, in line with your ideal client, where are they hanging out? What are they doing? What are they reading? Where do they get their information? How do they solve their problems? Whatever you find there is where you need to be. Don't fall into the trap of building a high risk business by being on one platform or by driving the majority of your turnover through one platform. It's incredibly high risk. You want to diversify your marketing streams, your market, yeah, marketing channels. Uh, and so this is a really good opportunity to think about the marketing channels that might be good for your business. Again, first iteration, come come back and you know with when you can review it with data and evidence about how that's going for you um, but have a starting point and then finally your goals so now you know what you're doing how you're going to do it you know your desired turnover let's start turning these into goals shall we so really um, think about where you want to be in 12 to 18 months time what does that look like put some hard numbers around it make them smart um, so you want to make sure that if it's a turnover goal, you set yourself um, the number and by when you want to be uh, earning it. Same with hiring, what role is it, by when do you want to hire. As much detail as you can because what we'll do then is the gap. This is the gap that often happens after a business plan has been written. It then falls off the face of the earth, it gets stuck in a, stuck in a drawer or in a random file on the desktop, whatever it is, it disappears. And then a few months later, you suddenly remember you have a business plan. Um, we want to avoid that. And the way that we avoid that is by taking these goals that are based on your strategic business plan uh, and turning them into action. Um, and so you can take your annual goals and turn that into quarterly milestones. So what do you need to achieve through the quarters of the year to make sure you've reached that goal? In turn, you can take those milestones and turn them into monthly actions. So what do you need to achieve at the end of each month in order to be meeting your milestones at the end of the quarter? And then in turn, you take those monthly actions and turn them into daily tasks. Um, and they don't have to be big. You might have three goals for the year, so it doesn't have to be overwhelming. But what it does mean is if you take your daily actions, you will reach your annual goals. And that means that this strategic business plan will have been brought to life. You will have fulfilled it. Even if you've refined it along the way, it will be brought to life and your business will be a reality. So that's how I do it. If you need support, you know where I am. You can find me on Instagram. You can reach out to me on my website using the contact form. You can send me an email. I've loved sharing this with you and I hope you found it useful. Let me know and I'll chat to you soon.